Good morning and welcome to the sixth Sunday of Easter. And thank you for joining us for worship. Thursday is the celebration of the ascension of our Lord. As we gather today, we express the truth. Jesus does not abandon his followers. Through the Holy Spirit, Jesus comes to abide with his disciples of every generation. At, as Pentecost draws near, we are reminded that the risen Christ dwells in us as the spirit of truth. We receive this spirit in baptism and pray that in our gathering for worship, and when we can gather around the Lord's table, the Spirit will transform us to be the body of the risen Christ or Messiah in this world. Let us pray. Loving God, as we gather this morning for worship, fill us with your Spirit, the Spirit of truth, that we may see Jesus' love and experience that in the sense of being the Father's love for us. Amen. Jesus said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another counsellor, the spirit of truth to be with you forever. Amen. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll join in singing, Love is the Law. Let us draw near to God our Father with a true heart and confess our sins and ask him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Our help is in the name of the Lord. He made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my sins to the Lord. Then he forgave the guilt of my sins. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we confess to you 
that by nature we are sinful and unclean, that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. And therefore we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy and plead for your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Most merciful God, you have given your only Son to die for us. Have mercy on us and for his sake grant us forgiveness of all our sins. By your Holy Spirit increase our knowledge of you and your will and make us obedient to your word so that by your grace we may come to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in his name, he gives the right to become children of God and has given them his Holy Spirit. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Grant this, O Lord, to us all. Amen. Join in singing, Come Down, O Love Divine. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray that we love one another as Christ loved us. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace through Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first Bible reading comes from Acts chapter 17 
verses 22 to 31. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship, and this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent, for he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 66 which is paraphrased by David Schutz and will be sung to the tune of Now the Green Blade Rises. reading for today is from 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 13 to 22. Suffering for doing right. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for, for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. 
but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behaviour in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better, if it is God's will, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water, and this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand, with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel for today is written in the 14th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, reading from verse 15 to 21. This is a continuation from last Sunday's Gospel. Jesus continued, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, raised to live forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving us and sending the Spirit to help us, teach us to love you and one another. Amen. And we will sing, God sends us his spirit.
Good morning, girls and boys, and for children of all ages. I'd like to share with you some, some thoughts for this week. I wonder, have you helped someone else this week? If so, what did you help them with? Perhaps you helped them carrying something. Maybe you helped cleaning up in the house or cleaning things up with your toys. Maybe you helped mum doing her cooking or dad doing his cooking. Maybe you were out in the garden helping with gardening. And perhaps some of you helped brothers or sisters with their schoolwork. I wonder, who can you think of and think of some ways that you could help others this week? Maybe that's a good question for all of us. Who might we help this week? I've got a piece of paper here, and, and you can do this at home. Get yourself a piece of paper. And get yourself a pencil. Pencil would be better than what I've got. I've got a pen, but I want you to be able to see this. And get your hand. Place it on the piece of paper and trace around it with the pencil. Get around each finger carefully. Up. Keep the pencil on the paper so that you can see all the turns. Hopefully, I can get a good picture of my hand. There we go. I think I've done it. One hand. Look at that. I only missed a few bits. Now, on your hand, it'd be great to write down a few of those things that we talked about with who you could help. For example, on my finger here, I can say carrying things. Over here, I can put cleaning. do a lot of cleaning these days. Up here I can say cooking. And here I'll put gardening. A few parts on the hand. Talking about the things you can do to help others. Jesus called the Holy Spirit our helper in some translations of the gospel today. I wonder, what does the Holy Spirit help us with? Does the Holy Spirit help us to believe in God, to have faith in God, to trust God to be with us? The Holy Spirit can help us to experience God's love for us. The Holy Spirit can help us to know that we are forgiven, that our sins are gone. The Holy Spirit is able to help us to love others and to be able to forgive others. Perhaps think of one person this week to pray for in a special way, to pray that God would be caring for that person and helping them. And you can write that name on your hand as well. I'm going to write a name of a, a very close friend I have in Sweden who I pray that the Holy Spirit will help 
to know God's love for them. And I've written his name on there as well so that we can pray. I want to pray that God will fill him with the Holy Spirit so that he knows God's love and will have faith in Jesus. Let us pray. Jesus, you are Lord of our heart. Help us to be gentle and respectful to others so that they see you live in us and your love through us. Amen. We'll join in singing because he lives. Grace to you and peace from our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Text for our meditation today is from the Gospel, from John 14, beginning at verse 15. I'm going to pick out selected phrases from that passage to share with you now. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you, Jesus said. And because I live, you also will live. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father. And I will love them and reveal myself to them. Loving God, you promise, Jesus, that you will not leave us as orphans but you come to us. You promise that you give us the advocate, the spirit of truth to be with us forever. You promise 
that because you live, we also will live. And you promise that as we love you, we're loved by the Father also. And you love us. And you reveal yourself to and through us. Help us recognize this in our daily life and what it means for every aspect of life. Amen. The Lord be with you as he also is with me. It's worthwhile remembering that this gospel that we have for today is based from the very beginning of chapter 14, the gospel we had last Sunday. I want to read the, the first words of the gospel from last Sunday. Do not let your hearts be troubled, Jesus said. Believe in God and believe also in me. It's interesting there because the focus on do not let your hearts be troubled is, is quite clear. And at times, I find that a bit funny. Do not let your hearts be troubled. It almost seems odd. It's actually interesting because human beings do have troubled hearts. It's not something we can just change by our own efforts. It's not something that we can just get over by positive thinking or develop something new. But it's interesting that as we come through that passage in John 14, we enter this slot this week where Jesus says, if or when you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth. He will give you another advocate to be with you forever. That's an interesting word, advocate. Do you personally know what advocate means? You know, in the first century, in the Greco-Roman world, the word advocate was actually the word given or the name given to a defence lawyer. Troubled hearts take place when one is accused, when one is charged with doing something wrong or feeling guilty about life. There's where troubled hearts come, when one is fearful and one is uncertain. That's the troubled hearts. We often face the accuser the one accusing us of doing wrong, the one accusing us of failing, the one accusing us of being weak, the one accusing us that we cannot cope. They have troubled hearts then. The one accusing us of being a poor parent. The one accusing us of, of not doing the right things at this time in this way. The accuser the devil comes with accusation at us often, giving us troubled hearts. But Jesus promises that he sends us the advocate, the defender, the one who puts forward our defense, the one who reminds us of our true defense, the one who gives the spirit of truth, the truth of our position with God. Truth, who speaks of the forgiveness, the grace, the love and the reconciliation that only comes through Jesus Christ. The truth that says we are put right. We are loved and cared for by Jesus and we are kept in his grace. Yes, 
that love that Jesus gives is that he says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will not leave you alone. I will not leave you deserted. I am coming to you because I live. You also will live. Here we enter into the whole resurrection story, don't we? Yes, Jesus died. Jesus paid the price for our accusations. That's our defence. That the truth tells us that our defender, our advocate, tells us and reminds us we are kept clean in God. We are loved by a loving God who pours his love out to us and into us all the time. Because Jesus lives, is risen and living today, we also live. I know, this Thursday we have Ascension, a celebration of Jesus going to be with the Father, we say. But rather, let's not think about different places, but let's think about the Father, Son and Holy Spirit actually being the ones who are in charge of this whole world. It's their creation. It's their love that makes this work and run. It's their love that brings life into this world. And Jesus with the Father actually emphasises that he has all that authority and power and strength to bring that love to bear for us and in us. I go to the Father. And because I live, you also will live. Because I live, you can die to those fears, those things that bind you. You can die to the accusations of the accuser who blames you for doing things right, who says you cannot get it right for God, who says you cannot please God. And you rise to life. You live also because the defence is there in the spirit of truth, the truth makes you whole. So what's this about commandments? They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me and those who love me will be loved by my Father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Those who have my commandments. On Monday, Thursday, we read a gospel from John that highlights Jesus demonstrating this aspect of love, the washing of the disciples' feet, the giving of self for the benefit of the other. And this is the love that Jesus is highlighting. This is the commandment. He says, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as or like I have loved you. Perhaps there's another way of looking at that too. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, empowered by developed through the love that I have given as I have loved you. For I have loved you through my death and resurrection. I have loved you by coming and being with you at all times. And that love never leaves. I love you and will not leave you orphaned, but I come to you. I am coming to you. I continue to come to you. I remain with you. I make my home with you. As we live in that love, as we keep that loving commandment of abiding, of dwelling in the love of Jesus, we begin and we grow in loving others. You see, 
It's not loving others so that we're fulfilling what Jesus wants. It's loving others because he loves us first and foremost. He constantly pours his love into us. The Father's love, Jesus' love, and the advocate standing there saying, here's the love you've got. You don't need to fall down under the accuser. Their accusations are not from truth, but they are lies. The truth is in what Jesus has done and continues to do and lifts us up. It's interesting in that last verse. Read it again. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Reveal myself to them? That is not just showing his self to them, that's actually exposing himself through them to others. His revelation is not for those who are already loving him. His revelation to them is to be through them to love others. I will love them and reveal myself to them and through them to this world that this world may know the love of Jesus. The advocate, the defence lawyer, the spirit of truth marches with you and me through life and stands up against any accusation that is thrown. The love of Jesus. Jesus who lives, and therefore we live also, is the one who gives us true life and true joy because his love dwells in us forever. And may the peace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit live in you and keep you in that certainty. And may you, in your times of doubt, struggle and accusation, may you hear the advocate, your defence lawyer, bringing you back to the truth of the love of God in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now join together in confessing our faith in our baptismal creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll sing, I'm so secure.
Jesus promises that we are not left as orphans, but that he comes with his Father through his Spirit to make his home with us. Let us pray that God bless our homes with his healing presence. Heavenly Father, thank you for the wonderful blessing you have given us, including our earthly families and our spiritual family, the church. You have revealed yourself to us in the form of your Son, Jesus Christ. Embolden your church as your followers to reveal your love to everyone in our, in our speaking and in our living. We pray for blessing on our Love Life community as it reaches out to new believers. Thank you for the songs of praise that we have to celebrate what you are working through your church. Make us thankful and teach us to overflow with joyful praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, the bride of Christ, that it may be like a mother to all who seek God's help. Help us to grow in confidence as we witness to others through our own songs of praise so that we may draw many to you. While we pray for our congregation, we also think this week especially of the Ringwood Knox Parish, Rosebud Congregation and Swan Hill Congregation. as church and your church is taking on a new online and virtual form, we ask that the word of God will permeate these online activities and touch people's hearts. We pray for pastors, for small groups, for church leaders, for all involved in working within this church as they are often working long hours, going over and beyond the shepherding responsibilities to congregation during this time of isolation. Encourage all those that are supporting and caring for fellow members within your body, Lord Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all parents, grandparents and guardians. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity to spend more time together with the members of our household. And thank you for the opportunity of even being able to visit family members more now. Be with all parents who are struggling with their increased load, protect our children and their teachers as students return to school. Lord, we pray for those feeling lonely and grieving the loss of connection, of support and of freedom. Comfort the grandparents and grandchildren who are unable to visit one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for children who have been separated from their families, especially those who are in refugee camps and do not know if other family members are alive or of their whereabouts. Give them the support they need through the various aid agencies and help them to be reunited with loved ones where possible. Thank you for the work of Australian Lutheran World Service 
and the Lutheran Church of Australia International Mission as they share your love and word with struggling people around the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You come near to us when we are lost and you hear our distress. Meet the needs of those who are sick, facing surgery or recovering from surgery. Protect all health work in health care and comfort the families of the sick. In particular, we pray for Scott, Leanne and Thad and for those who have suffered the loss of loved ones, the family and friends of Jean Jenkins. And we pray for the people we now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You remain with us always, loving Father, Jesus, our Messiah, and Holy Spirit, our Advocate. And your kingdom has no end. We remember the saints who have gone before us. Unite us forever in your final victory over death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of new life, you provide us with the care and nurture we need to grow as your newborn children. May your Son, Jesus Christ, come to us so that in him we may live together with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we'll join together in praying the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you peace. Amen. Our final songs today will be Nailed to the Cross by Rent Collective with Jesus is Alive by City Alight. God bless you and thank you for joining with us this Sunday for our worship. Amen.